Over the past few months, we've added a lot of new ways that you can create a database between adding Postgres support, adding planet scale metal. So in this video, I want to show you what it looks like to create a database and what your options are. So to do so, go ahead and click create new database and we'll go over here. I'll just name this awesome. And then let's dig into some of the options. So you have a region selection. So you want to select which region I'm going to say US East one. That's generally the, the popular one. Uh, and then the, of course, very important choice of your database engine. So for a long time, we have supported Vitesse MySQL databases, and this is a great choice. MySQL is a proven database. And with the power of Vitesse, we even have capabilities for sharding, so for really high scale databases and a bunch of other features that this brings along for high availability, uh, for usability, things like the deploy request feature that we have are powered by Vitesse. So this is a great choice. And then of course we also support Postgres now. So you can create Postgres databases. We don't yet have sharding support for this, but we will soon, stay tuned for that. And for both of these options, you get to choose between uh, EBS backed storage. So the advantage of this is you can have auto scaling storage, which is nice, or you can choose planet scale metal, which can be both more cost effective, but also most importantly, more performant because you get much lower IO latency, much higher IOPS values for a really good price point. So then on either of these for Postgres specifically, you can choose between your architecture. So you can choose ARCH64 or x86-64. And as you can see, you actually get like a preview of how many different options there are. So for Postgres in this particular region on metal, there's more options for x86. So we'll just look at that. And then in here, you get to choose what uh, number of CPUs and RAM you want. And then for each one of those, there's different amounts of storage that you can pair with it, right? So I could decide I wanna pair this with 929 gigabytes uh, of locally attached storage or 2.43 terabytes of locally attached storage. And one of the things I wanna remind you of at this point is some people will look at this price and it doesn't quite seem to add up because that seems like a lot for, you know, four CPUs and 32 gigs of RAM, but keep in mind, by default, all of these databases come with three servers. So one primary and two replicas in different availability zones. So it's actually these resources times three. You're getting three different Postgres servers with four CPUs, 32 gigs of RAM, and whatever storage you're choosing. So you go ahead and select what you would like there. Once you're happy with your choice, I'm gonna hit create database. And a few minutes later, the database is created and it is ready for me to start making connections to and doing a migration.